Welcome to Einar Anderson Stadium, where TSB Television proudly presents WFA Football. Today, we welcome you from Minnetonka High School as the hometown Minnesota machine take on the, the Nebraska Stampede as Minnesota looks to continue its winning streak while the Stampede look to pick up their first win of the season. Stick around, all the action is coming up shortly. Welcome everyone, Mike Peden here with Jeff Williams, my color commentator for this evening. And Jeff, two teams riding two different kinds of momentum. Yes, Mike, and the interesting thing about tonight is that the Minnesota machine has not had good luck in this stadium. They, they first came here in the playoff game last year, and then they lost their home opener this year. And it, out of three games, is this going to be their first win? But on the other hand, the Nebraska Stampede has never won in Minnesota. So are they going to break their bad luck here? We'll find out in just a few minutes. Minnesota's won their last two games against the Dragons and the Wolves. And a lot of that is their running attack. It's been running back by committee as they lost their top rusher, Sarah Wolf, to an ACL injury in week two, but Maggie Yalt and Yolanda Searcy have picked up the slack. Well, you have to give Coach Willie Howard some credit here because he knows what he has on this team. He knows the talent. He knows what they're capable of, and he works hard with them on training. So if one person goes down, Willie makes sure he trains a replacement, and that is kudos to the coach. Nebraska 0-3, but a couple of those losses were heartbreakers, according to their coach. That include a two-point loss to the Kansas City Spartans and a one-point loss to the new Iowa Explosion. Don't shut your eyes on this team. Tina Johnson with 5.5 yards per carry, so Nebraska can also run the ball effectively. Well, Mike, the thing about Nebraska is they are a young team. This is only the second year in the league. A lot of first and second year players, they're still working on gelling. And don't count them out, but they got a little ways to go to really be where they need to be. Well, the weather is beautiful. Couldn't ask for a better day. We're heading down to the booth, but stick around. The kickoff is coming up next. And we welcome you back to Einar Anderson Stadium. Well, we're starting a few minutes early, but that's okay. That means we'll get home a few minutes early. Mike Peden and Jeff Williams joining you up in the broadcast booth. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for your Minnesota machine. Minnesota wearing their orange jerseys. They will start the game by kicking to the Nebraska Stampede. And back to receive for the Stampede are number eight, Katie Brown, and number 21, Sarah Meindlinger. Well, Mike, we'll get home early if your uh, driver can actually get the directions out of here. <laughs> well, we got here without much trouble. Getting back shouldn't be any problem. But, boy, I'll tell you, this is one really beautiful evening. It is the beginning of May. And last year at this time, it was windy, rainy, and cold. So spring has sprung as we get set for the kickoff. Minutes, that's a long half. I know that. And they're adjusting the clock right now. I hear the beeping in the background. Sideline, sideline, too close. Okay, there we go. As right now, it's showing. It's certainly <laughs> it, there's not 55 minutes and a quarter last time I checked. And they haven't changed that rule in two weeks. And I don't think Nebraska is up 3 nothing. Well, now we got the clock fixed, but the score still reads 3 nothing. Whoops. That will, will no doubt, of course, change because right now it's 0-0 as Meinlinger receives the kick, moving to the 35-yard line, wrapped up at the 40, and that's where the Stampede will begin their offensive drive. Taken down by Shyla Eubanks. On offense for the Stampede, Abby Cherney at quarterback. You have Tina Johnson and Katie Brown as well, Sarah Meinlinger, and number 27, Ashley Box. Offensive line, Allie Crouch, left tackle, Christy Bunty, left guard, lower lead center, number 66, we don't have a name on her, we'll get that to you as best we can. Right tackle is Sarah Thurston, number 36, and the tight end, Snoop Vaughn. First and 10 from the 41. And they've got Johnson lining up under center. It's a wildcat to Cherney. That play is Fumble. broken up. Fumble. And it looks like Nebraska has probably recovered that. Tough to see from here. No, Minnesota oh. forces the turnover. And that's how Minnesota picked up those last two wins, getting those turnovers, just stopping momentum early on. And so now we're going to get a look at the machine offense in our second play of the game. And it was defensive end Jessica Patnode coming away with the fumble recovery. 
So the offense will take the field for the machine. We'll introduce them for you after this play. And the machine even advanced the ball two yards. First and 10 on the Nebraska 39 yard line. Minnesota has not lost to this team in three games. Nebraska, an expansion team joining last season in the WFA. Feets under shotgun, has time to throw, and it's almost, almost picked, picked off. off. Meidlinger, good coverage, but no pick. On offense for the machine, starting quarterback you just saw, Nicole Feets, wide receiver Katrina Stewart, running backs Maggie Alt and Yolanda Searcy. Tight end, Jesse Boyles, right tackle, Susan Brooks, right guard, Leela Willard. The center is Angela Allman. The left guard is Brett Campos, and the left tackle is Heather Baker. Well, Mike, uh, if this were last year, that would have been a sweep over to the left, and this play would be a sweep to the right. Now, it seems that Willie Howard's opening it up with a little bit of a passing offense here as... Hand off to Searcy. Moves forward to the 35-yard line. Gain of four. Ne Nebraska's defense, they run a 5-5-3. Five, five, Their linemen, Victoria Secor, number 83, Teresa Nikish, number 93, number one, Lindsey Carroll, number 44, Rachel Reed, number 42, Nicole Murphy. Linebackers are Mary Zelenka, 34, Cindy Pearson, 48, Katie Cabrera, 33. Secondary, Shea Horn, 11, 30, Michaela Beacon, 21, Sarah Meinlinger. As we have third and six here, Cersei gets through the backfield, looking for the first she down. She's the past corner. the 30. She's at the 30. Nice block, Becky. Nice block, Becky. Close, but the yard perhaps too short. They spot her at the 30, and Machine will be well short of a first down here, but this is four down territory. So what's Coach Howard going to do? He's got a fourth and two, and he knows about crunch time situations. He played for two seasons with the Minnesota Vikings before his career was ended abruptly by injury. And they're going for it on a draw, and it looks like they have enough for the first down. They do, and Feets very effective on offense on her own, averaging 6.9 yards per carry coming into this game. Four rushing touchdowns. And you really have to give credit to the offensive line. They really just pushed through that defensive line of Nebraska's, made them look like mincemeat. Now, Minnesota is undefeated against Nebraska in this series. We should note Nebraska got better with every game, and I believe the last game of the year was a one-point win for the machine, so they can't sleep on this stampede squad. Three receivers to the right as we have a fresh set of downs. Feet's looking that way, but we have flags. False start. Looks like it's false start. It is false start. First and 15 now. Minnesota averaging four penalties a game coming into this game. Well, so one down, three to go. <laughs> they're a very disciplined team, though, when you only commit four penalties a game. Well, they better not make a habit of it. <laughs> They're not going to lose a lot of yards via the yellow flag, and now they run a reverse <laughs> formation with three going left, and now Feet's looking to run right, almost wrapped up behind, gets to the 30. She'll gain two, second and long coming up. Do you have to you have to credit Maggie Alt with that. I mean, even though she was the one who had the false start infraction on the play before, she put a crucial block in there. That could have easily been a quarterback sack, and Alt wouldn't let it happen. Alt also part of an effective rushing attack from the machine. She averages nearly five yards a carry. Their big weapon, Sarah Wolf, suffered an ACL injury in the home opener when she scored her second touchdown of the game and we have movement and on the line. Movement. Looks like Selena Kopas got in there a little bit too quick. False start and the side judge explaining it to Coach Willie Howard. I could hear from up here we have the window open to get some airflow in the press box. So Even though that's not helping on a night with no wind. 
<laughs> so two false starts on this series for the machine. Now it's second on, and 18 Ryan. with 11.23 remaining in the first quarter. Okay, they got two out of their four penalties out of the way. <laughs> Clean snap this time, Feats with time to throw, going deep again, good coverage. The intended receiver was number 15, Katie Flynn. Third and 18 coming up. And Shea Horn was defending. I know uh, half the machine bench were looking for a flag on that, but it was a good, good defensive move by uh, Horn. I didn't see any contact. I'm up here, of course. But from my vantage point, I didn't see anything that would bear a pass interference call. Let's go, let's go. Third and 18 with the ball on the Nebraska 35. The 16 yard line is where Minnesota has to cross to convert and Feats will try to do it from the shotgun. Going right this time and the pass is oh. in and out of the hands of number 87, 83, Becky Bowman. Becky Bowman. And this time Minnesota lining up to punt as Daniel Thompson is set to kick. Wise call from here. You don't want to give up great field position to Nebraska, even though you forced the turnover. Thompson counting the number of players on the field. Meinlinger back to receive the punt, and she'll let that go as Thompson shanks it. Four yard line. Oh, they're going to mark it on the 23. So a 12 yard net gain that pushes them back a little bit but I think Thompson was ho hoping for a cleaner kick go, D, let's go. Well, I have to say this about Thompson she was a workhorse in the last two seasons she was uh, running back wide receiver defensive uh, cornerback plus kicker and punter and under Willie Howard she seems to have just specialized in kicking and cornerback she is listed on the Minnesota depth chart at other positions, though, so uh, Howard has taken her versatility into account. Fresh set of downs for the Stampede. They had a turnover on their last drive. Meinlinger rolling right, and she gets to the 29-yard line. Gain of six before being pushed out of bounds. We didn't have a chance to introduce the machine defense for you. We will now. The defensive ends are Selena Copas and Jessica Patno. Defensive tackles, Lisa Olson and Nina Cochiorella. The linebackers, Mary Walrath, Sarah Bishop, and Carmen Richardson. Your secondary is Danielle Thompson, Shalonda Williams, Lacey Roberts, and Abby Smith are the safeties. Six yard gain, second and four. Churney taking it herself. Taking it herself. And now she pitches, and it's going to be a long run by Over Katie Brown. Are they going to mark it on the 45 or the 46? Let's go, D, let's go! You got the pitch, Kurt. First down, regardless, it appears they will spot it at the 41. That's a 12 yard gain. Fourth round. Katie Brown averaging 3.8 yards a carry, only had 61 yards rushing coming into this game. We'll give her 12 more. We should note if you're new to WFA football, their timing rules are similar to the NFL, so the clock does not stop for first downs, and we will have a two-minute warning in the second and fourth quarters. As we're down to 9.26 remaining in the first quarter. Katie Brown, the 5-3 rusher from Omaha, Nebraska. In fact, most of the team is from Omaha. This time, Cherney keeps it, and she's got space up the middle. Brought down by a host of tacklers, but not before. She gains nine yards. I noticed there are a couple of uh, Nebraska players from Bellevue, Council Bluffs, Iowa, Pawnee City, but most of them are from Omaha. Only one player from Iowa, that's Deb Hanner, based on the roster we have. 
But Council Bluffs, Iowa is right across the river, so that still counts. <laughs> a 10-yard gain. They give Nebraska the first down, so Cherney picks up the first down. Now she wants to throw and almost, almost picked, picked off. off. With the coverage is number 17, Abby Smith. Cherney, 11 of 25 on the season when it comes to the air. Second and 10. Well, so far the Stampede are looking pretty good. They're making some ball movement. Their defensive unit has gotten Minnesota's offensive line to move a few times. So right now the momentum seems to be clearly on Nebraska's side. Second and 10 on Minnesota's 48. Cherney with the handoff. The number, it looks like Cindy Pearson got the carry. And it was Cindy Pearson. Bishop with the tackle. Pearson, the 5'5", 210-pound linebacker from Wahoo, Nebraska. Wahoo. But they have a lot of fun over there. <laughs> Five-yard gain on the play. Third and five now for the Stampede. And we've got more movement. That, and we got a fumble. That may be an offsides call. And there is a flag. I believe that will be offsides and the and officials are signaling that way. And it looked like Lacey Roberts was in on it. As there was movement, the officials did not stop the play, so it was not a false start. And it is offsides. And that should give machine. Nebraska a first down by virtue of the penalty. Watch the ball! Minnesota, that makes three penalties now. Okay, Mike, the uh, announcers just played a show, uh, a game show tune, name that tune. <laughs> not what the machine wanted to hear. But if you watch The Price is Right, that sound effect should be quite familiar to you. And it will be just short of the first down. It's third and one now. I thought they'd get first down by virtue of the penalty, but instead it's third and one. So Minnesota could still get a stop right here if they can wrap Cherney up in the and backfield. It's first down. Cherney needed one, she got two. Cucciarella with the tackle. Seven minutes remaining in quarter number one. And we're still at a, tieless, a tied scoreless game. Nebraska marching the ball down the field though. And like we said, this is a team that slowly improved against Minnesota as the season progressed last year. Well, they slowly improved, period. Still looking for their first win, but they've been close a couple times. Cherney, keeping it herself, gets to the 35 before she's brought down. And with the tackle is Pat Node. Three yard gain unofficially. Second and eight. You're gonna hear Coach Howard yelling for water. And I got a feeling they're seeing, calling for the same thing on the Nebraska sidelines. Hydration is a key to success on a 70 degree day like today. Or a 35 degree day like we had a few weeks ago. Turney again, handing off to their deep back number 45, Tina Johnson, and Johnson pushes the ball forward. Gets to the 29 yard line. They spot it at the 30. Nebraska looking at a third and two. Johnson, the team's leading rusher for the season. With 99 yards. Journey this time going ag again, this Katie time to Brown. Brown. And Brown has more than enough for the first down. Pushing the ball to the 25. So Nebraska getting first downs 
with the style of offense Minnesota likes to run. Run, run, run. Now I was watching Nebraska in the uh, pregame, in the pregame warmups, and I'll tell you, this is one team that really takes conditioning seriously. They were out there stretching, doing jumping jacks, doing a whole bunch, a whole rigmarole of, 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 of exercises, and they came out here ready to play. I don't see any signs of cramping yet. They're looking really sharp. Fresh set of downs, and now I'm working against the sun. Cherney once again to Brown. And Brown working off the pitch, picks up one. Smith with the tackle, second and nine coming up for the Stampede. Second and eight is the official ruling. And as we near the four minute mark, this is only the second possession that the uh, Stampede have had in this first period. And the machine has only had one, so it's really a ground game today. We might be home early the way this is going. Journey to Johnson. Johnson gets maybe one. Run up the middle, and the machine were not fooled. Patnell was the first to get to her, but there was a host of tacklers. Johnson was going nowhere. Third and long coming up for the Stampede. Third and eight to be precise. Ball in the 23. Big chance for the machine to stop the Stampede. They had a fumble recovery overturned by an offsides penalty earlier in this drive. Brown in the backfield. Cherney looking to pitch to her and she does. And Brown won't get enough. Up. Danielle Thompson on the on the tackle. No gain on the play. Fourth and twenty-eight. Fourth and, Fourth eight, and eight from the twenty-third. <laughs> move my head too quick. This sun is starting to drive me crazy. Nebraska going for it, and I'm not surprised here with their field position. You look like you're, uh, you've been put in a boiling pot of water. <laughs> I'm sure I've been sun-kissed today. Turney looking to throw, under pressure. Almost wrapped up, breaks free, still going, still fighting. She's up to the 20, and that's not gonna be enough. <laughs> Minnesota will get the ball for their second possession of the game. With 2.07 left in the first as they force the turnover on downs. You have to give some credit to Nell Gelhaus on the last play. She really got into the backfield really quick and really disrupted the stampede. Beats lines up. And it's a quick handoff to Alt. Alt. And she get, works her way to the 30 before a bunch of Stampede players 21. bring her down. 21. Nine yard gain on the play. Alt from St. Louis Park joined the team right out of high school. That's impressive. Well, you only have to be 18 or older to play for the machine and Alt decided to Start young. Second and two, another handoff. Good job, Maggie. Great job, Alt Let's go. picks up the first down. Great and Lindsey Carroll on the tackle. Lindsey Carroll, five foot nine, 260 pounds, also from Omaha. <laughs> I wonder what they think about their collegiate school moving to the Big Ten. We'll have to talk about that later. This time it's a pitch to Searcy. Searcy to the 36 yard line. That's a gain of about three. Go hard, Maggie, go hard! Searcy on the season, six and a half yards a carry. Oh, I'm looking at the receiving numbers, there we are. 
6.1. I'm going to get this. Four 20, yards a carry. 23 carries for 92 yards. Longest is 16. So she averages four yards a carry. I was going to get that sooner or later. Second and seven for the machine, and we've got movement on the line. That is their fourth penalty of the quarter. I should and not have mentioned their you penalty. You should not have mentioned. You gave the broadcasters jinx. Unfortunately, I will take my culpability. Yes, I will take my lumps. <laughs> I mentioned it about, well, one down, three to go. Now, we'll see if Willie, can, uh, Willie Howard can really crack down on his team for the penalties. They've already hit their average, second and 12. They may let the clock run out with 10 seconds. And it looks like they will let the clock run out and focus on the second quarter. And that might be Willie Howard's strategy to get them refocused. With three false start penalties and an offsides penalty. So not a lot of yardage given up, but momentum a key factor. Momentum is a key factor in this game, and Nebraska has done a wonderful job in controlling the tempo of this game. I uh, don't know what they were thinking with the fourth and eight, but they still managed to eat up the clock, get some yards, and uh, another key is the fact that Nebraska does not have a single penalty in that first quarter. Very nice. That is the big difference between the two teams so far as we have a scoreless tie as we start the second quarter. Earlier, so let's make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, the public address announcer mentioned this, and we should as well. It's Selena Kopis's birthday water? today. Any water? water. Happy birthday, water. Selena. <coughs> Don't ask not me to now. sing for you. That's not no, going to no. happen today. No. Yeah, Don't ask me either. Well, I guess we can't make a deal because we're not women. Unless they somehow involve us in some way, which would be highly unlikely. Unlikely, and I might jump out of the window here. Second and 12 as Feets keeps it herself. Works the way Feets looks like she's going to turn the corner. She no. gets stacked up at the 30. And that is Makila Beacom. Made the tackle as Feets tried to jump above her. Beacom, the team's leading tackler, 16 coming into the game. Come on, come on. Looks like we have a winner in our Let's Make a Deal promotion. Somebody made a deal, and it sounds like they had a good deal. <laughs> Ooh, $25 cash each. I could use that myself. Well, two lucky mothers got that today. And since tomorrow is Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers who are watching this broadcast. No gain on the last play. Third and 12 now for the machine. Feats in trouble. The pass is complete, but it's going to be short of the first down with the completion. Becky Bauman. 11 yards. The machine needed 12. For Willie Howard, the two year Vi Vikings veteran. And that is Bauman's third reception on the season. So far, she's only had two for 13 yards. And she's uh, hit that total with one reception for 11. Fourth and a yard and a half. They don't there's give that, halves. So. There's that half yard again we <laughs> had two weeks ago. We were discussing, <laughs> called it the peed and roll. They don't do halves, so they're calling it two, but machine going for it. Aggressive play calling here from Willie Howard. Will it pay off? An aggressive line from Nebraska. And the machine calling timeout, time so it looks like they were trying to draw Nebraska off sides. So uh, while we're on the timeout, Mike, what are you doing for your mother for Mother's Day? Well, I will be at the Festival of Nations for most of it, but uh, we get done at 6 o'clock, so I'll have some time to enjoy it. Uh, it'll be nice, and I don't think we have anything planned, but I haven't been home the last few days because I've been away. Did you buy your mother flowers this year? <laughs> Still working on that. Okay. <laughs> well, my mother lives down in Arizona, and I made sure, since I wasn't going to be able to make it all the way down there to take her out to lunch, I made sure that she got a uh, really nice bouquet of roses uh, a couple of days ago so she knew in advance that I wasn't going to miss Mother's Day for her. And she called me up on Thursday practically in tears thanking me, and, hey, what are mothers for? They put up with us when we're snotting those little kids, and 
when we're adults, we better treat them right. I'm sure they're enjoying in Arizona. And I thought they were going to punt. But they're going to go for it here on fourth down. So that timeout apparently was to draw up a call. And Feats with oh, the keeper. Feats with the keeper. First down and easily. first down. And then some. Needed a two yards. She got three. Feats was not the starter last year for the machine. That role went to Abby Krause. It went to Kim Miller. It went to a number of different players as they had to fight through injury. But Feats very effective so far and she appears to show more poise with each game. She does. Uh, I can definitely tell that she's been working on her passing accuracy. She's been working on just controlling the way the game should be. Hand off on first down. The carry. And she does. All brings it to midfield. Four yard gain. And I'll tell you this. In the uh, off season, the Minnesota machine really were energetic and enthusiastic about coming into the season when uh, Coach Howard's interim tag was lifted and he wanted to bring a new blood, get an early start on things. This team was raring to go back in October. I heard that five players joined recently, so they had to All put on. With a long carry and breaks free. She's down at the 40, 35. 40. One person to beat. Oh, and gets taken down at the. 27 yard gain, Nicole Murphy with the tackle. A non-Omaha player, she's from Gretna, but Maggie Yelt with her first big run of the day. Her longest run coming into this game was 29 yards. 22 or 23 yarder on that play. And I don't think she's from Omaha. No. Timeout as we have a stoppage in play with a Andrew player down. Timeout. So. To that last point, I talked with uh, Jenny Olson, who was the assistant to Willie Howard, and she explained to me that the machine added a bunch of several late additions, and they had to wear the alternates for the current players, since you have to put on a jersey in order to be eligible to substitute in. So you have a few players wearing the same numbers as some of the current players, just in the road whites instead of the home orange. And, and they got the water girls out there. The player that brought down Alt, Murphy, she went down and now she's getting up and she's walking back to the sideline, so. Well, that was definitely a hard takedown. And no matter which way you slice and dice it, that turf is still tough. It's also not even, as I discovered walking out there today. First down and 10 for the machine, regardless, as Feets works out of the shotgun, goes to Cersei. Cersei Trying to get to the first wave, doesn't no appear game. she will. Packed in line of scrimmage, may have lost one. Second and 10, Cersei, again averaging four yards a carry. Longest run of the year, 16 yards coming into this game. So she has yet to get that huge break that Feats and Alt have had, and Sarah Wolf too, until her injury. Ten to 56 to go. Still no score. They give Cersei a one yard loss on the carry. Feats, good blocking. Working away forward, gets to the 20 yard line. Looks like just shy of the first down. Eight yard gain. That should make it third and about three. And now the machine are getting into field goal range. Thompson has yet to kick a field goal, but the machine do have that option. They're at the 21, so a field goal from here would be about 37 yards. That might be outside Thompson's range, but. That's why I said we're getting closer to it. <laughs> Let's see if Cersei can bring them a bit closer. She doesn't appear. Oh, she seems to lose to. They spot her at the 20. So what's the coach to do? Well, you got to go for it here. You're at the 20-yard line. Even if you don't make it, 
you give Nebraska a very difficult field position to work with. They're not bringing out Thompson. As a field goal from here will be 37 yards, like you said, close to a range, but not quite. And the machine will take their second time out of the half to think this over. 9.33 left in the, first, in the second quarter. And I'd like to remind you, if you want to purchase a DVD copy of this, uh, just visit us online at the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com. And as we speak, I am working on a new site if I ever get a break. I've been working tournament after tournament, project after project, but uh, I should get a couple weeks before the links begin, and I'll have a new site for my coverage. I'm still working on the URL. I've gone through a few candidates. And we have information on our halftime festivity as well. Now, Jeff, you talked about your getting involved with the sports page, and so why don't you maybe give us a preview of what's to come for the sports page in the Minnesota Lynx. What's to come for Sports Page Magazine? You can go ahead and view uh, articles on various different sports, whether it be women's basketball, women's football, uh, men's lacrosse, college, some of the other professional leagues, baseball. Uh, sportspagemagazine.com. We are a nationally syndicated organization online uh, out of Connecticut, and we have reporters in every major and even some minor uh, cities throughout the country de dedicated to, get to covering your sports needs. Let's see if Feats can cover the machine's needs, and she and overthrows no. her target. So the machine will turn it over on downs. The intended receiver was Katie Flynn. Flynn not getting the lucky end of the draw so far. So the machine turned it over, and Nebraska gets another stoppage. Two possessions for both teams, and they both have come up empty. Jeff, you have you haven't have any hair accessories? Do you have any hair accessories? The hair accessories? Do I have even ha have any hair? No, not really. Does a hat count? <laughs> First and ten as Cherney lines up. Nebraska hasn't seen action for a few minutes as they start with the handoff to Johnson, and Johnson gets about five on the carry. Pat Node with the tackle. And to answer your question, I don't think the United States Air Force would appreciate any hair accessories on my head. <laughs> well, you're not on duty with them, are you? Second and five as Nebraska pushes the ball maybe a yard or two forward. Got to be ready. Always prepared. <laughs> well, that's true. You're on reserve duty, if I'm correct, but that still means you could be called up for uh, some sort of service. All they need to do is call me and say, get, get your butt over here in an hour, and I'm working. <laughs> well, if you happen to leave midway through the game, I'll know why now. Third and four. Cherney lining up in the shotgun. Pearson in motion, but they go to Brown. Brown wrapped up behind the line. Jessica Patno, when she finds some penetration through the line, She's been highly effective. That was not fooled on that play, and she just went through where she figured that the Nebraska player would be and was right in her anticipation. Pat Node, again, just great penetration. She has been the catalyst when it comes to covering the gaps. And Nebraska, fourth down. Fourth and five, and now they call now a timeout. call a timeout. 7.59. Is there a limit on how many timeouts you can call in a quarter? No, <laughs> no, no, they're, they're talking things over. And uh, Nebraska, as we mentioned, their collegiate representative joining the Big Ten Conference next season. The Big Ten Network, of course, has already uh, worked them into their broadcast. And a lot of those players, when I talked to them about the broadcast, they were interested. And speaking of, the WFA getting quite a bit of attention this year. ESPN3 streamed a game last weekend featuring the Columbus Comets, last year's runner-up in the WFA against 
I'm still waiting Pittsburgh for uh, ESPN3 to call us because we're available as a broadcast team. Yeah, you want to come out to Minnetonka, give us a call. I mean, we've got the Lynx, who are now the darlings of the WNBA, at least for now. On paper. That's for sure. And Nebraska punt by Ashley Box. And that was a... Well, Thompson was there to Thompson field takes it. it. Thompson with space. She gets wrapped up at the 40. We've got flags on the play, but Minnesota, more importantly, will maintain possession. The ball went in and out of the hands of Abby Smith. We'll find out what the flag is, but give credit to Thompson for that, keeping that was, her eye on the ball. That, that was definitely a heads-up play by Danielle Thompson, and she does know how to protect the ball and carry it, like I said earlier in the broadcast. She was the workhorse for this team last year, and while she doesn't really have much in the way of running back responsibilities or wide receiver responsibilities, that doesn't mean that she doesn't have that skill set. Illegal block on Minnesota, so that will push them back to the 43-yard line, but... Again, Thompson there to make sure Nebraska doesn't force the turnover, so I think Minnesota will take their fifth penalty of the game. Jinx. <laughs> they still have good field position, but uh, yeah, I hope I didn't jinx them. Now my big question this year is uh, what will happen with the links and free throws if, when I don't look at their stat line? I'm gonna blindfold you. <laughs> And Mike sits right next to me during the Minnesota Lynx games. Well, it depends on where they spot me this year. Uh, handoff on first down, pushes to the 45, alt again. And Lindsey Carroll on the takedown. Alt getting a lot of action behind the line, and she stepped up as that first, second stringer. I, you could say Minnesota almost has two first stringers. After but you, you, on that, you also have to give Mary Zelenka some uh, credit. She and uh, and Lindsey Carroll each had uh, half a tackle there. Two-yard game by Alt, second and eight. Seven minutes remaining in the second period. Scoreless tie. Searcy with the carry now. Searcy to midfield. And she gets her first big gain of the day. It will be a first down, no flag, so the play will stand. They spot her at the 43-yard line. 13-yard gain unofficially. For a moment, I thought she was going to run into her own coach. <laughs> you see an excited Willie Howard on the sidelines. Uh, almost pushed right into him. When they, when they went out of bounds, and I'm not just talking about Alt, but I'm also talking about the Nebraska players and anybody else on that play, and he just took two steps back and then went right past his feet. Fresh set of downs for the machine. It's been run, run, run all game as a new player takes the field for the machine. That is Lexi Tully. Number 28, she joined after the machine had already submitted for their roster, so she doesn't have a name on the back of her number 28 jersey, but that doesn't make her any less of a part. And at least they printed out her name for us. <laughs> so we can tell you. <laughs> Two yard gain by Tully, second and eight. They have Alt in the backfield this time. She gets the carry, and look at that. She Breaks finds free. some space, and she will be down at the 30. That's good enough for a first down, 11-yard gain. Ran into her own line and then found some space on the right side. Well, the great NFL head coach Vince Lombardi always said, run to daylight, and that's exactly what Alt did. She ran to daylight. All finding more daylight as the game has gone on so far. As they turn the lights on here at Einer Anderson Stadium. The sun has to set eventually. I'll give it about a half an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> 4.55 left. Still no score. Both teams have reached the red zone, but they've been stopped once they get there. Feet breaks through the first wave, gets some good blocking, and she gets to the 27-yard line. It'll be good for a four-yard gain. Feet follows some great blocking on the outside for a gain of four. 
And Brett Campos really nailed a good block in there. That's what allowed for the gain. Otherwise, it probably would have been stopped for no gain on the play. Public address announcer confirming what we saw and, of course, uh, siding with their hometown team. But that's okay. They're official volunteers with the team, so you would expect that. Second and six. Another pitch to Tully. Tully works away past the 25. She'll be taken down at the 24. Three-yard gain, third and three for the machine. We got three and a half minutes left in the second period. We do have a two-minute warning. The machine have one timeout left, so they have plenty of time to score. One thing I noticed in the second, second quarter so far is that both teams are getting more into it. They are more vocal out here. First couple of possessions in that first period, nobody was talking. Now that's all you hear. Tully almost wrapped up behind the line, but she gets maybe one. Nicole Murphy on the stop from Gretna, Nebraska. Fourth and two from the 23-yard line. Just outside Thompson's field goal range, so again, the machine will go for it on fourth down. As the Stampede players on the sideline pump up their players on the field. Fourth down conversion's not been too successful so far. Feats with the keeper. She gets to the 20, and we have a fumble on the play. It looks like Nebraska recovered. Okay, so that was just like a short punt. <laughs> Stampede do recovery, like you said, a short punt. They would have picked up the ball about that spot anyway. So two minutes and 17 seconds remain. And Nebraska has two timeouts and the two-minute warning on their side, but they have to march the ball 79 yards downfield. And as we mentioned, once the teams enter their opponent's red zones, they seem to stop. Well, you talked about going home early because we started this game early, and to keep up like this, <laughs> the second half is any indication of the way the first went. We might end up having 0-0. Zero, zero. And the pass is picked off. Cherney throws Abby an interception Smith. to Smith. And Smith with room to run. To the 30, to the 25. Big turnover by the machine as we have 2.01 left. And Allie Krause <laughs> took down Abby Smith for the tackle. As we hit the two minute warning. We'll actually change the possession so it looks like we'll get looks like we'll get one play in and then we'll hit the two minute warning. And the PA announcer getting the Cersei with the carry. And we are now at the two minute warning. I just found out and that. And there's uh, a flag on the play. Our camera, one of our cameras isn't working as it should. So, we have, so we've got tape, but we'll have to get that situated. Illegal block on Minnesota, is the call. Illegal block on Minnesota so that will. That's uh, penalty. Number six. Uh, number six. One fifty-two left. We are at the two-minute warning, and Minnesota, again, by far committing more penalties than points. Zero, zero. 
Well, both teams have, uh, well, Minnesota, I believe, yeah, they have six, and Nebraska hasn't committed one. Now, Mike, will you consult the uh, rule book and find out if they allow for any drop kicks anymore? <laughs> Do you know what a drop kick is? I, that term precedes me. Okay, in the National Football League for many, many, many years, until they came up with the current uh, oblong-shaped ball, the uh, player would get two. Uh, the team would get two points if a player would get the ball, spike it on the ground, and kick it through the uprights. Kind of like a punt, but not really. You know, it's kind of a mix between a kickoff and a punt. When the ball was more round, they were doing drop kicks all the time. And then as the shape of the ball changed, they weren't doing, and I think the last time was 1960, if I recall correctly. So it would be something for WFA fans to uh, see them do a drop kick and get uh, <laughs> points. But I don't even think that the players and coaches know what a drop kick is anymore. I and that's in the National Football League, that's actually still a legal play. I don't think they, <laughs> I don't think they have that planned in the playbook. I certainly see, haven't seen any drop kick plays in the NFL since I've been watching. Do you know why they got rid of the drop quick drop kick? Because when the ball would land on its pointy end, then it would it, it would be unpredictable in where to kick it, and it would just got harder to do. First and twenty-three. Feet's going deep. Has a Bowman open, and the pass is complete. Good enough for a first down. And did Nebraska touch her? Yes. They did and touch she's her. Down at the she was down by, down, at, down by contact at the 14-yard line. Minnesota with one timeout left. One minute, 30 seconds left. And now they are definitely in Thompson's field goal range. Ball at the 13. They can get one more first down without a touchdown necessarily. Now, Bauman did go in, you know, just in case. And that was the longest pass play of the season for the Minnesota Machine. 110 left. Searcy wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. I think the machine are focused on running out the clock here as they have the ball and control. They do get the ball to start the second half, so I think their focus is if we can't score, we're not going to let Nebraska get an opportunity. I think that Coach Howard is just doing everything he can to get points on the board right now. Well, I'm sure. Question is, how? Tully and Cersei in the backfield, but Feets opts to throw. Looking for Bauman again, and there's a flag there that will be flag. pass interference. Pass interference. Complete, but there is a flag on the play. And if it is pass interference, that will be Nebraska's first penalty. And that was Emily Pender from Omaha, Nebraska. So an automatic first down for the machine as she was grabbed from behind. Bauman, I should say. And Pender's just shaking her head right now. She knows. She's not forgiving herself for that one. Well, she can't let it affect her now because it's first and goal from the three. The machine looking to get some points on the board before they head for the locker rooms. Feats, quarterback keeper, lunging forward. And stopped short of the one. Minnesota will take their final time out of the half. 22.7 remaining. Now we'll take a halftime break, of course, and uh, Jeff will run out, get some pictures for the sports page. So he'll join the booth, of course, later on. But for the first few minutes of the third, uh, you may not hear from him. Yeah, I'll be here through halftime in the beginning of the third quarter. I still have another job to do. I will be going out, taking photos, and then coming back up here and joining Mike in wait, the broadcast wait, booth. What are you doing? I thought you're taking photos right now, though. You're, you're doing your second job. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to continue talking. <laughs> 22.7 seconds left, and, and we've got some pizzas. I hope that's for the public address announcing crew. Maybe they'll give us a slice, but we're good. We're good. Big question for Minnesota right now isn't their pizzas. It's how they're going to get across the goal line. They're out of timeouts. 
So if they get stopped and they don't get out of bounds short of the goal line, they'll have to spike the ball. Second and goal. 22.7 seconds left. At Feats. least it's not the ice bowl. Keep an eye on Feats. She had a quarterback sneak before. She may try that again. And she is pushed back. They rule it down. Feats is taken from behind. We're down to 12 seconds. And so the machine will have to 10, spike the ball. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. No, four, Feats is going to try to call three, a play. Two, She's going to try to go in. And she, and is, she is wrapped up. And it's a fumble. They ruled her down. Ruled her down, but she's short of the goal line regardless. So Nebraska with the goal line stand as we end the first half the way we began, a scoreless tie. As they say, the say? first half is history, and it was a scoreless history. Scoreless history? Well, we'll take some history of our own and be back with the second half shortly. We welcome you back to Einer Anderson Stadium at Minnetonka High School as TSB Television continues its coverage of WFA football. I'm Mike Peden and Jeff Williams will join us shortly. He's got to take some pictures for the sports page as we mentioned before the second quarter ended. And if you've just joined us, it's a scoreless tie. Both teams have entered the red zone on several occasions, the Minnesota Machine and the Nebraska Stampede, but neither can cross that plane, and Nebraska punctuated their defensive effort with a goal line stand at the end of the second quarter as Nicole Feets could not get the quarterback keeper. We've seen a lot of running, not a lot of passing, although Feets did connect with Bauman for the longest play of the season earlier in the second quarter, a 25-yard play. So Feets with 36 yards passing, 25 yards rushing. Bauman with that 36-yard reception officially. Alt with 49 yards on the ground. Searcy with 24 yards. 
We do not have a statistician on Nebraska's end. We've got to work on that, but we will as we continue our coverage here. We have two more games for you after this, but they will not take place until June. So it'll be a while before we come back again with machine coverage as number 17, Smith. That's Abby Smith, and she gets the ball to the 39-yard line to start the first drive of the second half for the machine. So let's see if Minnesota has any more luck in half number two. Now, again, we are out for a month as the machine take a few more buys, and then they have another road game or two. But we will be back in June, and if you can't wait until then to hear from me, I will be covering the Minnesota Lynx as their season begins in early June. Feats with the pitch to Cersei. Cersei had a big break in the last quarter, and she looks to turn the corner Great here, job, gets to the 46-yard line. Seven-yard gain on the play. Second and three coming up for the machine. The machine, again, undefeated against the Nebraska Stampede coming into this game. They played three times last year. Minnesota won them all, but Nebraska got progressively better as the series went on, and this game is a continuing indication of what we have seen in the development of this series, Nebraska, an expansion team that joined the Women's Football Alliance last year. Second and two is the official ruling. Feats looking to pass, going to Bauman. Bauman complete. Bauman looking to break free. She doesn't quite do it. The tackle is from Sarah Meinlinger, but another big completion by Bauman. They spot her at the 25, so a 25-yard gain. And Feetz's two completions have been to Bauman thus far. Bauman, the wide receiver, number 83. Coming into this contest, Bauman had just two receptions all season for 13 yards, and so she is clearly going to add to those totals. Cersei can't do much. Picks up three. Second and seven for the machine. We have 13.07 left in the third quarter. Nebraska looking for their first win of the season. They had an 88 nothing shutout loss to the Kansas City Tribe and two close losses earlier this season. A two-point loss to the Kansas City Spartans and a one-point loss to the Iowa Explosion, 14-12 and 14-13 respectively. Minnesota rattling off two W's after getting shut out in their first game of the season to Chicago, 69 to nothing. Feats, quarterback keeper, looking for daylight on the left side and gets back to maybe the original line of scrimmage. They spot her at the 23, loss of one. Minnesota then defeated the Wisconsin Dragons They gave her four in the play. I misread the yard markers. It's third and three. And then they had a 27-6 win over the Wisconsin Wolves. So thus far, they have yet to lose to a Wisconsin team. That's not something the Vikings can claim or the Gophers. Eleven fifty-three left. Feats. It's a play action, Bauman the intended target, and we're gonna have another pass interference call. It looks like it will go against 85. 95, Ariel McLaughlin. She brought Bauman down though after the pass, so it's instead of pass interference, it's a defensive holding call. Again, Bauman was dragged after the pass had gone by her. So a defensive holding call, but still an automatic first down, and that will make it first and goal for the machine at the 10-yard line. Minnesota got down here on their last possession, but Nebraska stopped them with a goal line stand. Alt with space. She can't punch through, at least not to the goal line, but she does gain seven. That puts her total past 50.
They spot her at the four. Second and goal. They are within Thompson's range if it comes to a field goal situation, but I think Minnesota is looking to answer some unfinished business on this drive. 11.06. Let's see if that NFL experience from Willie Howard proves fruitful here. Feats to Alt. Touchdown, Minnesota. No flags. Maggie Alt kept running and running and running and comes through with her second rushing touchdown of the season. It comes at 10 minutes and 52 seconds left in the third quarter, and that was sparked primarily by that defensive holding penalty two plays earlier. Ariel McLaughlin's holding call bit the stampede in a big way as we hear some Todd Rungren. We're not at Lambeau Field. The ball, low snap on the point after, and Thompson had nowhere to go. So no extra point for the machine. So they will have to settle for a 6-0 lead with 10.52 left in the third quarter. So we'd like to remind you, if you want to purchase a DVD copy of this game, just visit us online at thesportsbrain1.blogspot.com. That's thesportsbrain1.blogspot.com. We will have coverage of the upcoming June games for you with the Minnesota Machine. So Nebraska getting... Some life, some momentum here, stopping the extra point. Again, a low snap from the machine. So this game not over by any means. And the Stampede are now one touchdown away from perhaps taking the lead. But Minnesota taking advantage of their first possession in the second half. We should note that the half pints drill and drum team, drill line and drum squad performed for us during the halftime break. It's a squib kick. Did that go 10 yards? It did, but I believe Nebraska fell on it. Yes, they did. A squib onside kick by Thompson. So the machine is trying to pull a page from the New Orleans Saints playbook from the 2009 season. Of course, we all remember that if you're a fan of football with New Orleans onside kick to start the second half. It paid big dividends for them, of course. But Nebraska recovers the onside kick, and they will have great field position. Willie Howard, though, showing his aggressive play calling nature. Going forward on fourth a couple times. And now you have this, an onside kick, trying to catch Nebraska off guard. But they weren't fooled. Tina Johnson lining up. Could be a wildcat formation. No, Johnson pitches to Cherney. Cherney turns the corner, gets to the 39-yard line, a gain of three. Pat Nob tackles are out of bounds. Gain of four on the play. Cherney, as we mentioned, 3.2 yards per carry coming into this game. 10 carries for 32 yards. Only Mills and Brown have scored touchdowns for Nebraska on the run. Five-yard gain is what they call on the field. Johnson going to Cherney again, and Cherney with plenty of daylight, but a flag. Pending the flag, they will spot her at the 29-yard line. Gelhouse and Smith with the tackle, but we'll check the marker. Middle linebackers, Bishop. It appears the flag will go against Nebraska. No threat in the middle there, right? Why are we waiting? She had a holding penalty. Nebraska's third penalty of the game. They had gone nearly an entire half without getting a yellow flag, and now they have three. So that will set them back 10 yards. From the spot of the foul, of course, it's second and 11 and a half, almost. 
But they call it second and 11 since halves are not included in down and distance situations. Cherney now back under center in the shotgun. Looking to throw, and the pass is almost picked off, and it falls incomplete. Abby Smith got a hand on it, but she couldn't haul it in. Smith with one interception today, can't pick up her second, but third and long is facing the Stampede as they try to respond to the Minnesota touchdown. Third and 11 from the 45. Nebraska has to advance past the 34. Flags on the play. False start on Nebraska. The public address announcer called it. I may want to check where he gets his eyesight. Right guard was called for the false start. Number 36, Sarah Thurston. Third and 16 now. And Nebraska, after playing some disciplined football, getting a little rusty. Turney with plenty of daylight on the right side, and she is forced out of bounds, well short of the first down marker. Shalonda Williams forces her out of bounds. Nebraska with a and it appears they will punt. They are in enemy territory, but they have a long way to go to convert on fourth down, and with Minnesota scoring on their last drive with good field position, I think they're looking to push Minnesota back. Ashley Box back to kick, Smith to receive. Smith muffed a reception earlier, and she's going to let this bounce. It will fall short of the goal line, though. I think she was hoping it would bounce into the end zone for a touchback. But good coverage by the Stampede. Good punt by Box as it took a Stampede bounce, and Minnesota will be pinned at the four-yard line to begin their next possession. Now we talk about near defensive turnovers. One goal that Lisa Olson, the team owner and defensive tackle, told me before the season began is she hopes to emulate one of her Packers idols, B.J. Raji, and get a pick six before the season is out. Of course, the Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl for the 2010-2011 season, or as you better know it, Super Bowl 45 against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Feats going to Tully. Tully trying to turn the corner, and she gets close to the 10. They'll spot her at the 9 as Minnesota looks to establish some breathing room. Feats also a Green Bay Packers faithful. In fact, quite a few Packers fans on the Minnesota Machine roster. There's a few Vikings fans as well, though. Minnesota hosting a 50-50 raffle. I have to, I'll have to check to see if I'm eligible. Second and five, as this time they go to Tolley and she tries to run right. And no gain. 7.40 left. Loss of one, third and six, facing the machine. This would be big if Nebraska can force a three and out deep in their own territory. The punting game, the kicking game, still developing in the WFA. It's not quite at the level you'll see in the NFL. It's improving, but again, still developing. That would be a huge opportunity for the machine, or the stampede, I should say. And it looks like it will be a three and out. Yes, it will. They Pitched to number Tully. 
Tolly needed six, but she only gets five, and Minnesota forced upon here. A great defensive stand by Nebraska, forcing the three and out. Just under seven minutes to play in quarter number three. Daniel Thompson lining up to punt. Meinlinger to receive. Clean snap. Clean kick. Deep kick, but Meinlinger has space. Has room on the right side, trying to turn the corner. And a great return by Sarah Meinlinger, the 5'4", 140 pound defensive back from Omaha, the Northwest Missouri State alum, gets Nebraska into Minnesota's red zone. A huge scoring opportunity presents itself to the Stampede with 6.17 left. Again, Minnesota did not convert on their point after, so if the Stampede score, they have a chance to take the lead. Nebraska, not a highly offensive team, so they're trying to keep Minnesota's scoring total low. And in those two losses to start the season, that's what they did, kept their opponents to a low score. And look at this. Meinlinger is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Jessica Patnode again. When Minnesota penetrates, Patnode is there. And a considerable loss for the Stampede. That pushes them back to the 16-yard line, a three-yard loss, is the ruling. And Minnesota will take any type of loss they can get in terms of yardage. Five forty left. Johnson and Brown in the backfield. They go to Johnson, and Johnson pushes forward. Gets close to the original line of scrimmage, but a third and long presents itself to the Stampede. As Minnesota looks to stop them one more time in the red zone. Nebraska has had several trips in the red zone throughout the game, but they've not been able to convert. Third and 11. Cherney looking to go to Brown, keeps it herself, and that's a fumble. Scramble for the ball, Nebraska picks it up, but that play had no chance. Cherney was wrapped up by Minnesota's line. She tried to pitch it off to Brown before the sack, but that play was dead as soon as they got to her. Carmen Richardson was the first to get there. And now Nebraska will call a timeout. They are facing a fourth and 15. They have to move the ball past the three to convert for the first down. Now, Carmen Richardson did some acting during the offseason. She appeared on a web series called Them. We had the producer of that series on for the first game of the year, but we had some technical problems and couldn't bring that profile to you, but we are working to bring her back later on this season. Her name is Ty Green. Carmen, known as Big C among the machine faithful. As they have expanded in roster size considerably from last year to this year, they had a few key losses, which included Lisa Bastian and Sam Byram but they gained a lot more. And that included Sarah Wolf, who unfortunately won't get a chance to show her abilities for the rest of the season. And Emily Pakula, who was all set to play and then found out she had a thyroid cancer diagnosis. She's doing fine and things are good, but Field goal attempt for Nebraska, 35 yards. Lindsey Carroll back to kick. And it's a bad snap. Johnson forced to pick it up. Johnson in trouble. Breaking free of tackles, but not for long. Patno brings her down. 
And a bad snap by Nebraska gives Minnesota a big break. A huge turnover on downs after Meinlinger ran off a great return to get into the red zone. And once again, Nebraska shut out when they get there. Then to finish up on Bakula's story, she's doing fine, but she's focused on her recovery, so she will not be suiting up for the machine this season. She was all ready to play, very excited. She talked to me a little bit before the season began, but things happen for a reason. But we're glad to hear she's okay, doing well, and hopefully she'll be back for the 2012 campaign. Alt with the carry on first and 10, picks up two. Second and eight. And so far, the machine holding their own. And their mantra throughout their franchise history is battling through injuries and finding a way to persevere as they did last year. All with another short gain. They lost two of their quarterbacks last year to injury, and they still won the Midwest Division. They were placed in the North Division this year. As the WFA expanded to nearly 70 teams, and the Midwest Division became so large that they moved the machine to the North Division with the two Wisconsin programs. So teams like Nebraska and Iowa are no longer divisional foes. That doesn't mean they still won't play them on the schedule. Feats in trouble and gets rid of it under pressure, but it's picked off. Noah rolls incomplete. There's flags on the play, but that will be for holding. Katie Flynn, that was a clear hold. And they're talking with Nebraska now. As they decide whether they want to accept or decline the penalty. Interesting situation here. If you decline, it's fourth down. You force Minnesota to punt. If you accept, you push them back. You get some better field position, but you give them an opportunity for a big play. Nebraska accepts the offensive pass interference call, making it third and about 13. Interesting play call by Nebraska's coaching staff. Again, that gives you better field position if you can stop Minnesota, but it gives the machine a chance to run a big play here. Feats, short completion. That will be short of the first down to Katie Flynn. Flynn to the 35. And now the machine have fourth down. At the 34. Fourth and six, the official ruling. They have to move the ball past the 40 for the first, and they're going for it here on fourth down. This is a surprising call. Feats with plenty of time to throw, but no one is there and it's almost picked off. But that's a hidden blessing for Nebraska because had Meinlinger picked that off, it would have been pushed Hard back run. in terms of field position. So another gutsy play call. Willie Howard knows no fear, but this time his risk does not pay off. And Nebraska on, will take the ball at the 34 yard line in Minnesota territory. Two fourteen left in quarter number three. Six nothing. Machine lead the Stampede on a four yard touchdown run by Maggie Alt. The only touchdown of the game, the only score we've had. 
as outside of that, both teams have shut each other down in terms of offensive production. Johnson lining up, pitching to Cherney, who reverses to number seven, Snoop Vaughn, but the machine aren't fooled. Vaughn leveled by Thompson. Three yard loss on the play. Second and 13 now for the Stampede. Meinlinger in trouble, wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Sarah Bishop with the tackle, but also on the coverage, Lacey Roberts. Roberts served an overseas tour last year, had to leave the team early because of that to fulfill her military duty. And now she forces a tackle for loss. And so, other machine defensive players are joining the fray and not letting Pat know do all the tackles from behind. Three yard loss, third and 16. Nebraska has to advance past the 24 yard line. Journey is leveled, can't get the pitch off to Brown and Brown with nowhere to go. Mary Walrath got to Cherney before she could make the pitch, and Carmen Richardson will be will gain the tackle. Put that on her stat sheet as we approach the end of the third. Nebraska unable to capitalize on their momentum swings, and they may let the clock run out. Six seconds. Box to punt, and they will get it off before the quarter ends. A booming kick as Flynn picks it up. But that's not Flynn. That is Smith, and Smith with space on the left side. And she is leveled at the 41-yard line, but a great return by Smith. 32-yard return officially. A net gain. They'll spot her at the 45 yard line, a net gain of about four. But that brings us to the end of quarter number three. So Minnesota will have a six nothing lead and possession to start the fourth. And I would not be surprised if they continue their run heavy offense. Run heavy offenses are quite common in the WFA. We'll do our best to get interviews with players of the game following the conclusion. Come on, sophomore. We'd also like to remind you one more time, the sportsbrain1.blogspot.com is where you want to go to pick up a DVD copy of this game. We begin the fourth with Minnesota holding a 6-0 lead and showing great poise on defense under pressure. Alt with the carry. And Alt is continuing to motor her way. Has space on the left side before she is brought out of bounds. 17-yard gain as she brings the ball to the 37. And once again, Minnesota in Nebraska territory looking to put the clamp on this game and increase their winning streak to three. Feats to Searcy. Searcy gets to the 35 yard line before she's brought down up the middle. Cersei has struggled for the most part in terms of rushing yards. Watch. 
all providing the big plays on the rushing attack. And Tolley has had a couple of solid gains as well. Cersei just hasn't found a lot of momentum today. Alt with another carry, short gain. Third and about seven coming up for the machine. Minnesota hoping to get a first down conversion here which would allow them to kill more clock. And with a one possession lead, nothing is certain yet. Feets looking to throw, going left, looking for Wilson, and Wilson juggled, it's still live, and it falls incomplete. Wilson, who goes by the nickname Cassius McSwaga, did everything she could to keep the ball and get it within her arms, but she just could not maintain possession. That brings up fourth and seven, and no question this time, Willie Howard sends out the punting unit. Wilson, great effort to scoop in the catch, but she just could not keep her hands on it. And Nebraska almost comes up with a pick. Meinlinger back to receive. She ran off a great return on her last punt, and it's a low, booming kick, and it will sail to the end zone for a touchback. 35-yard punt, 15-yard net gain. So Nebraska forcing a three and out, and they'll have 12 minutes and 42 seconds to tie and perhaps take the lead. As the sun finally sets here at Einer Anderson Stadium, this is the first year the machine have played at Einer Anderson Stadium as a permanent venue. They did play here last season in what was their season finale in a playoff loss to the Iowa Thunder in a game that was called because of lightning and thunder. As Jeff Williams says, Finished up his photo opportunities. Cherney brings the ball up for a one-yard carry. But plenty of time to march down the field and tie or take the lead here. This game is by no means over. I was on both sidelines during the uh, third period. And I'll tell you, both coaches are still maneuvering. They're still calling out trick plays, secret plays. They're calling things differently. And they're explaining to their players exactly what they need to do. And so this is a coaching battle in addition to a playing battle. Well, and you saw on the field, and I mentioned up here, is Cherney with the carry, moves the ball up to the 30-yard line before she's brought down by Richardson. A no. lot of aggressive play calling from Howard on going for it a couple times. But, but I will also have to tip my hat to the Minnesota Machines defense. Uh, I'll tell you, they were really hitting pretty hard out Watch there. The I could hear the uh, crack from across the field. And I'll tell you, this is one really hard hitting team. Had uh, the Nebraska offense a little discombobulated there in that last possession of the third quarter. Looked like a little Journey. movement on the line, but there was no uh, flag. Journey should have enough for the first down. And it is a first down. So the Stampede take their first step as they try to steal a win on the road. Their first win of the season should they pull it off. They've got 11 minutes exactly left in regulation in order for them to pull it off. There's plenty of time on the clock and they're gonna do their best. They're gonna keep going and they're not giving up. This team is by no means out of it yet. Nebraska, a team that prides itself on its defense they don't score a lot, but they don't allow their opponents to either. Heads up play by Lacey Roberts getting in on that play. Tackle for a short game. Nice 
Roberts served an overseas tour last season, had to leave the team early, couldn't play in their playoff game against Iowa. So, uh, Mike, did I miss anything in the third quarter? <laughs> I was too busy looking at life through a lens. Four-yard touchdown run by Maggie All, but that's been it. Outside of that, it's been a defensive chess match. And that chess match continues as Cherney is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Host of tacklers were there, including Bishop and Richardson. Walruff was also there. Long third down coming up, and a key third down for both teams. Every third down is key for both teams at this point. And we're going to have a timeout to talk it over. This is not like a Packer Viking game. This is more like a Packer Steeler game. Every possession counts. Every play of every possession counts. As far as I'm concerned for both teams, this is like a playoff game. There is so much of a grudge match between these two squads. They are both wanting that victory tonight. And we're still nine and a half minutes away from finding out if we stay in regulation, if we if this six nothing or six three score is gonna be it or if it's gonna be overtime. I mean there's that possibility yet. I know you were hoping to get to bed early tonight, Mike. <laughs> hey Nell, you gotta stay low. Getting ready to take your mother out for brunch for uh Mother's Day tomorrow, before the Festival of Nations begins uh, in its last day. We'll see. I mean, we saw when Maggie Alt's touchdown machine had a low snap on the extra point attempt, so if Nebraska scores, who's to say they don't have a low snap or two? And that's a thump. It's an incomplete, incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. But I'll tell you, unless the Nebraska Stampede can hang on to the ball, they're not going to get in the end zone, and that is their biggest problem in the second half so far. They are dropping easy passes. Uh, look at the uh, kick off, the uh, field goal. Uh, that was botched on the uh, snap. Uh, on that fumble that was recovered by Minnesota, I will say that that was an expertly timed defensive hit. It happened right in front of me. And that where I have to really hit my, uh, take my hat off to the uh, Minnesota machine on that. But in the, in the third period, Nebraska offense is playing a little bit sloppy. And they really need to tighten it up if they're going to have a chance to win. Smith back to receive the punt. She fields it cleanly. Has some room for a return. Good block by Roberts. At midfield, 40 yard line. Down Smith, to the 30. One, one person, person to beat. And shot by. Down to the 10. Wait a second, there's a flag. It is a touchdown. A flag at midfield. That, was in the that could be a block that in the in back. The I thought I saw one, but we'll check the marker. Yes, it is. And you had to call that momentum back. Well, I didn't call it back. It happened right in front of my eyes, so I know I can't jinx them this time. But a block in the back, and I saw that as Smith was weaving her way through the seams. A great return by Smith negated by, by the block in the back. See, I didn't see the block in the back. I saw the official take the flag out. I saw the block in the back, and I checked back here to see the flag, and sure enough, it's there. Minnesota's eighth penalty of the game. I'm glad you were counting. I lost track at six. <laughs> Well, by, the way, the by the way, this is the Aikman and Buck uh, broadcasting team. In my case, that would be A-C-H-E-M-A-N, Aikman. <laughs> and then, of course, we got the young Buck, Mike Peden, with us. We, and we were just asked machine. if uh, we were doing a TV show, and the answer is yes, we are. 9.09 left. Hurry that up. would have been a touchdown and a Hurry huge up. momentum killer for the Stampede, but Minnesota did themselves no favors with a block in the back. But that doesn't mean they can't score. Now it's up for the Stampede to see if they can come out and... Down by contact. Down by contact by Rachel Reed from Omaha, Nebraska. And with the carry... Jackie Cavillhog. Get in there. Right, next Cavill play. Hog now back on the sideline and perhaps Sorry. Howard looking to get some fresh legs behind the line. And if you can hear the chattering on the field, both teams are really getting into this game. Cersei with the carry now. 
She finds a hole. Oh, she made sure. Goodson blocking. Pushing forward. She's got enough for the first. But taken down by Ariel McLaughlin from Omaha, Nebraska. Not before Cersei gets the first down. And McLaughlin, right now, may be the player responsible for how this game turned out. She was called for defensive holding penalty. And two plays later, the machine used that to their advantage and scored the their only touchdown of the game. And the way it stands right now, that remains the difference in our score. Alt in the backfield. Handing off to her as she pushes forward. The machine looking to get first downs and kill clock. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, the season opener last year, the Stampede's very first game, was like a 50 to nothing or 53 to nothing blowout. The machine just kicked. But I'll tell you this, they've been battling back. And even with last week's uh, huge blowout where the Stampede were on the losing end of that, this game is not a blowout by any means. Both teams are still very much in it. And this one could be a nail, bi nail biter, folks. We got seven minutes and 10 seconds left in regulation. All with the carry. Had space, but it was eaten up quickly by Carroll, making it on, second and seven. No, third and seven. About no gain. That's the first time I've heard that. But as I mentioned earlier, Nebraska priding itself on its defensive abilities. They may not score a lot, but their opponents won't score a lot either. Sideline, sideline, sideline. Sorry, Nebraska. I just, <laughs> that performance last week, I have to make reference to it. It was pretty bad. I know you've learned your lessons. All Maggie will, Alt will team. not get the first down. Team. The machine fans booing. Lindsey Carroll on the stop. I think they were hoping for a more aggressive play call, but again, Minnesota playing it smart hey, here. Katrina, if they don't get a first down, do not let the clock stop for any reason. And right now, the clock's down to six minutes and one second left in regulation. Fourth down. And it's a smart play call when you consider Nebraska's struggles in offensive production, getting yards and whatnot. Don't need to do anything crazy. Just play methodically as the punt is wrapped up by McLaughlin, and it's she's leveled by Surfy. That was pancake. Surfy levels McLaughlin. And so Nebraska looking at an 85-yard drive again to score. And so and I'm they've only got five minutes and 39 seconds to do it. A lot of time left. And uh, Jeff, while I go charge up my cell phone for a moment, why don't you explain uh, what you saw from the eyes of the lens? Through the eyes of the lens, what did I see? I saw a lot of really very tough defense out there. Uh, both teams are really hitting very, very hard. Their uh, coaches are both manipulating. They're just conniving to try to find that advantage. And an incomplete pass. And I could not see who that was intended to. So you're saying I didn't miss anything. He didn't miss anything. He missed an incomplete <laughs> pass. Second and ten, five and a half left. But on the sidelines, there was a lot of hard hitting. Uh, Maggie Alt on that touchdown run, she had one heck of a stiff arm. You could hear it crunch. Quick screen pass, and Thompson not much. takes her down. Good tackle by Thompson as Ashley Box sees her first action under center. Box with her first completion of the season. Stampede are running out of time. Five minutes remaining in regulation. Third and 10, ball on their own 15. And they still need 85 yards, and I don't see Brett Favre out there on the field. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want Brett Favre, although I did hear that he is considering a coaching or TV analyst gig. 
Not immediately, but that's what he's looking at. I thought he was going to be the king of social media. <laughs> False start penalty on the Stampede. That doesn't do them any favors. Third and 15 coming up. And if you take their last game into account, the 88-0 shutout, the Stampede have not scored in the last seven and two-thirds quarters. They have gone 116 minutes without a point. And they will extend that streak with an interception. Number 32, Jack Shalonda Williams, a machine rookie with the pick. That just might be enough, but Nebraska has stopped Minnesota from scoring since that touchdown in the third. Well, now, again, as I've just mentioned, it's been mentioned in the last few minutes, it's a clock management game right now. And I expect to see more runs than passes. I think that they're going to do everything they can just to keep that clock going. And they get this possession down to the two to underneath the two-minute warning. I think right now that's the big goal for uh, Willie Howard and the Minnesota machine. First and 10 at the 35, but... The machine are more concerned about killing clock than scoring necessarily because they're in front, and that's the big stat to lead in. Pitch Lexi was to Tully. Yep. Pitch goes to Tully and stays inbounds. For as the clock hits four minutes and twenty seconds. I'm sure that's what Feats is telling her players, and I'm sure that's what Willie told his team before they took the field on offense. Stay in bounds. It's a three yard loss. Three yard loss, but uh, that's three yards that um, the Stampede aren't gonna get back from the clock management. No, but if they force a three and out, they would have another chance. Tully has space, it's wrapped up quickly, but she's still pushing forward. 29 yard line is where she'll go. Close to the first down marker. Nine yard gain third and about four and we said every third down is crucial every in the final quarter is, in, this in the whole, could this be the game, game. It was the whole, third downs are crucial in the whole game in this game this third down could decide the game there is the two minute warning coming up in one minute 15 seconds and I believe Na Nebraska still has a couple timeouts in the pocket Nebraska has two timeouts left so Nebraska, not done yet, even if they give up a first down, but they certainly don't want to. Maggie Alt with carry. And she'll move no to the 28. That forces a fourth down on the machine, fourth and five, and well, this will bring it down to the two minute warning. Depends on when the play clock started. There isn't a play clock here, but the officials do keep track of it on their watch. Minnesota electing to go for it here on fourth down, which... But even so, Mike, we're within... It's it's two minutes and 17 seconds. We just got to run this off and run the clock down. Yeah, which makes sense here. Even if you don't convert on fourth down, you bring the ball to the two-minute warning anyway, so nothing ventured, nothing gained either way. And they will and let they it run. They will let it run out of the two-minute warning. So the machines kill the clock strategy. Seems to be working. Well, it brings us to the two-minute mark, but they have one more play. Nebraska has to stop them one more time. And then march down the field. A tough proposition given the Minnesota defense, but even if Nebraska, well, we have two timeouts left. You have the two-minute warning. First down, you stop the clock two more times. But Mike, let that me would give you about 20 seconds but left. Mike, let me tell you something that uh, Paul Kraus, the great uh, Vikings defensive and uh, was he an end? When did Paul play? Kraus, I know he was on defense. I know he was before my time. Many of the Vikings were. Paul Kraus has 81 interceptions in his career, which is by far a league record, which is probably not going to be touched within my lifetime. But I had dinner with Paul Krause back in November and he was telling me a story about Bud Grant's philosophy, which echoed Vince Lombardi's philosophy at the time. Every play should be able to be broken for a touchdown. 
and all it takes is one crucial block. And so Nebraska's not out of it yet. One play. Fourth and four. This could be the game. Feets in trouble. And Feets gets stacked up at the 40. What do we say? Nebraska needed that big stop. I'd say that's a big stop. Now they only need 60 yards in one minute and 53 seconds. Beth Johnson, but we have a flag. But there is a flag, and I think it's false start. Oh, Defensive no, it's holding. holding on the stampede. I'd say that's the worst time to pick up your fifth penalty of the game. That, that makes it, a sack. and that essentially, folks, barring anything stupid like a uh, turnover. Or a Brett Favre throw into triple coverage. <laughs> Thankfully, Brett Favre's not out there tonight. <laughs> uh, this game is about over. Just run out the clock, take a knee, and the, the Nebraska machine will have, uh, they're under two minutes away from actually winning one at this ballpark. Nebraska has two timeouts left, so even they could stop, get one more stop here, but they'd have about 15 seconds to move the ball. One more first down will seal the victory for the machine. Feats wrapped up from behind. Nebraska will use one of their timeouts. Looks like a loss of one. If they have them, and maybe they don't. You said they had two timeouts left. And the clock is still running. Perhaps they're electing to save their timeouts for later. Is there a later? The momentum killer for this game, if it holds, penalties on Nebraska. We were talking about Minnesota struggles early, but their penalties not as inflicting as Nebraska's. There was a defensive hold that led to a touchdown two plays later to start the third quarter, and now the defensive holding penalty. That turned a sack into a first down for the machine as Tolley doesn't get much, but that's fine. We're under one minute remaining regulation. And I'll tell you this, the uh, Stampede played a penalty free first half. That's when the machine were racking theirs up. It was right out of the gate. There's a, there's a, the flag's flown, uh, flying on uh, Minnesota. And yeah, Nebraska was cool, calm and collected, but that third quarter was really the turnaround. And it looks like Nebraska was out of timeouts. Well, now they use one. So Nebraska does use one of their timeouts with, with 31, 31 seconds, seconds left. Strange time to call it, unless, well, it's still a strange time to it call it. It's a strange time to call it. Yes. I don't know what was going through you, their coach's head. About 15 um, seconds went off the clock. He's got some sort of idea or plan, but Actually, 26 seconds went off the clock before he called the timeout. Yeah, yeah, you would think you'd call it right away. Not with 31 seconds left. The only thing I can think of is he wasn't sure how many he had left, and he may have had to ask, and it took 20 seconds to get the answer. That is a, that is a possibility. They do not have the timeouts listed on the scoreboard. We are not playing at the Metrodome. We are not playing at uh, TCF Bank Stadium. Nobody's I, playing at the Metrodome right now. I guess you can't ask for uh, you know, the timeouts left on the scoreboard. I mean. <laughs> uh, well, we'll be done with this game around 9. <laughs> yes, we will. We talked about it. And we're going to go home early as the machine take a victory formation. And Minnesota and will extend And Abby their Cherney just came over and clocked. I couldn't tell who she clocked. Possibly Maggie Ault. Little consolation for the Stampede, though. They go to two straight games without a point. Minnesota with its lowest point total of the season since their 69-0 shutout loss to open the campaign. But a win's a win, and Minnesota will take it. They move to 3-1 and one on the year with a 6-0 win. Uh, no doubt who the player of the game is for the machine, but the key play, the defensive holding penalty by McLaughlin. So would that make McLaughlin the player of the game? Uh, I won't not go for the right far. reasons. I will not but go But give far. credit to Nebraska. They played a tough defensive fight, and they made Minnesota earn this win. And 
I'd like to see how Nebraska continues their defensive presence throughout the season. The Nebraska team I watched last year and the Nebraska team I watched tonight are completely different. Uh, sure, the score, the lack of scoring on offense is the same, but they've got so much potential and they're, they're moving up in the right direction. I really expect to see a lot of them in the next season or two. I mean, you cannot say you know, much more than that about Nebraska. This is a team that is on the rise. They've got the right attitude, and I expect to see them in playoff contention within a season or two. They held Minnesota to six points, and the machine, they'll take this win, but we talked about it coming in. Nebraska would be a challenge, and they got it. They got that challenge tonight. So we'll wrap up from here, but we're not done just yet. We're going to do our best to get a player interview with Maggie Alt, who scored the game's only touchdown in the third quarter. So stick around. Mike Beaton here with Maggie Alt, the player of the game for the machine, who scored the game's only touchdown as she serenaded by the machine faithful. Maggie, your touchdown was led in part with a defensive holding penalty on Nebraska. How did that get your momentum in the red zone? Uh. Take your time. I don't know. I don't like these questions. Well, describe the touchdown run. Um, I love you. you got some fans? It was pretty awesome. Um, they told me I hit the girl pretty hard, which is a good feeling. Um, yeah. Talk about your <laughs> Sarah Bishop. Uh, Bishop wants to be in it too. <laughs> and we got here at state tournament, but. Uh, You've been on this team for a few years now, and you've developed as a player. You came in right out of high school. How do you think you've developed as a football player since then? Um, I've learned a whole lot of plays. Uh, the coaching staff is great because in high school, guy coaches don't really want to teach a female how to play football. But um, it's I learned a whole lot, and if I went back to high school, I'd show those guys something else. <laughs> and speaking of coaches, it's the first season under Willie Howard. You've had a few games now to get used to a system and adapt. How is the adaptation process going? Um, pretty good. I actually knew Willie Howard because um, he coached at St. Louis Park and he coaches at Cooper and his daughters go to St. Louis Park. So I kind of knew him previous to him coaching here. Um, he's an awesome coach. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Machine on a three game winning streak now after a six nothing win. What does a low scoring chess match as Nebraska provided tonight provide for the machine as they continue the second half of the season determination we're we're winning so a win is a win that's all that all that's that's all that matters I don't know <laughs> well you're right a win's a win because that's what counts in the win column and speaking of wins is there any winning feelings you'd like to share with the rest of the machine players or fans that might be watching I don't know who we play next but we're gonna kick ass <laughs> <laughs> I just come out every game just to play. I don't really care who we play, but we're going to play and win and have fun. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Anyone you want to say hi to? Um, my parents, um, my sister, my brother. Hi. I don't know who else watches this, but all oh, my team. But you all saw me on the field. I don't know. <laughs> well, there was a league game on ESPN3. Who knows? Maybe they might come here and uh, stream a game for us. That would be pretty awesome. Well, congratulations. I know you take a month off, so we won't see you until June, but a great way to start the second half of the season. Thank you. Yeah. Makey all player of the game for the machine. That does it from here. Minnesota wins 6 to nothing over Nebraska. Thanks to Makey Alt's four-yard touchdown run. I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in June.